Hey guys, I promised I would give you a little bit of background in Python just because using it on Odoo is essential if you want to get the most out of it. Now, I am by no means a developer, but I have learned a lot of different tricks that help me to use Odoo effectively. So I want to share those with you. Certainly, I may get torn apart in the comments because, again, I'm not a developer. But, you know, at the risk of being torn apart, I'm going to share this with you and hope it helps you. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into my demo database, a nice safe place to test this out. And I've gone ahead and thrown some demo data in here for us to use. Server actions is a great place to start just because it helps us to get a good frame of mind about everything that we're using here. So let's go ahead and call this guy testing, testing. We're going to run it off of the contacts model or contact model, I should say and we're going to execute Python code. And I'm gonna clear this out real quick. We can dig into this later. It's not something that I use day to day, so we're not gonna dive into it now. So the very first thing is making sure that we are calling our action appropriately. So we always start out with a server action with for record in records, which is again saying whatever records that we've selected, we wanna run this code for. So if we're in list view, we can do checkboxes and run this code on every single record. Or if we're in a form view, it just run on that single record. So the first concept that you need to understand is variables. So going back to algebra, a variable is X. X has a certain value. The same is true in Python and programming languages. So we can call our variables whatever we want, but it's helpful for our programming to call them something that makes sense to us. So to assign a variable, we're first going to say contact ID is the contact ID is what we're going to get. And we're going to go to record dot ID. Now, hopefully you watched my act like a developer models and fields where I explained how all this works, but there is a unique identifier for each record in the system. So on the contact table, the record that we're looking at right now has a specific number tied to it. And that number, although you may not see it, in the database is stored in any many to one relation that refers to this record. Anytime we want to grab the value of a field from a record, we can do record dot and then the field name and that will give us the value for that attribute or field on that record. To illustrate this, we're going to do something else. So we're gonna do record dot name and then we're also going to do raise user error and contact ID, which isn't a very applicable variable anymore, but it'll still work. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate this tab and we're going to go down to our contacts. Okay. And then we're going to go into Jimmy customer, who's the demo customer we created. The thing that we forgot to do is create our contextual action. We're going to do that real quick. Yep. And then we're going to go back to Jimmy customer and refresh. Okay. Now that we've refreshed, we can click this cog up here and you can see we have testing testing. So we're going to click that and see what happens. So what pops up is a user error with the value for the name on this record of Jimmy customer. Okay. So we can grab specific values from the record, but what if we want to get a list of records that are related to this contact? So the first thing we want to do is we want to see where the records are that we want to collect. So we're going to go out here. We're going to go to sales and inside of sales, we have the information that we need. So we want to go ahead and get a list of sales related to Jimmy customer. So what we do is we go and say sales related is our variable. And we're going to say equals ENV. And then we need the model name. So we're going to go back to sales orders and we're going to say sale.order is the model. See how that says model equals sale.order. We're going to say sale.order. And then we're going to say dot search. And inside of here, we need to stick the specific filters that we want on this data set. So we're going to say, okay, we want customer or partner ID, as you can see popped up because we're in developer mode. We want that partner ID to match Jimmy customer's ID. So we're going to say partner ID equals, and we've got our contact ID right now. It's the name. So we need to change that back to ID. 
and we're going to say contact ID. If we wanted to filter this down further with additional criteria, we would go ahead and do a comma and an open set of parentheses and fill in those additional criteria there. But that's not really what we want to do right now. So we're going to go ahead and clear that out. Oop, put that back. And then what we're going to do is what's called a loop. And we're going to go ahead and see how many of there, these there are. And we're going to go ahead and sum what the total is so we can see basically how much we have sold to Jimmy customer. Okay, so we're going to do what's called a loop here. So we're going to say for sale in sales related. Okay, and that's basically saying for each record in this group that we have now, we want to do something. So we're going to create a couple more variables here. We're going to call this sales count equals zero. And we're going to say sales total or tote equals zero. Okay. So for each sale, we're going to say count plus equals one. So that's going to add one to our count. And we're also going to say sales tote plus equals sale. So again, that's our variable dot. And we're going to go over here. And we're going to look at this and say amount underscore total. So now we're going to go ahead and create a string, which a string is a list of characters. It could be a sentence, it could be a word, but we're building it here. So we're going to go ahead and say string, well, error string, because we don't want to use string. We're going to say equals, and we're going to say record dot name. So that's going to be Jimmy. Then we're going to put a little bit more information. So the plus allows us to stick additional pieces to this string. So we're going to do plus and then in quotes has however many sales. So we're going to say string because we have to do, we have to convert a number to a string. So we're going to say count. So Jimmy has, and then we're going to say sales totaling and then plus and string again, and it's gonna be sales tote. Okay, so that's what we're gonna raise in this user error now. So let's go ahead and save, and we're gonna test this out real quick. Okay, so we got an error, which is good. And you might even say that was intentional, but it wasn't. So we have an error. And in Odoo, errors usually have the most useful information at the bottom. So it says for record and records, and it says name CNT is not defined. So if we go back here, I've got CNT. And actually, you guys may have noticed this if you were sharper than me. Sometimes it's easier to watch somebody play solitaire than to play solitaire but we actually didn't use the correct variable here. So we need to do sales count and sales count, and we're gonna save that. And we're gonna go back to Jimmy customer, and we're gonna try it one more time, okay? Jimmy customer has two sales totaling $115. Well, we've done some great work here. That's all well and good, but what if we wanna be able to see this string after the fact, or maybe we wanna do a calculated field to create this string. Well, we're going to go back to Jimmy customer. We're going to go into studio and we're going to create a field that receives this value. Okay. So we want it to be a character field. We're going to go ahead and drop that. Well, wherever it'll let us. And then we're going to name this properly. So we're going to call this X studio. Well, we'll just do it up here. Sales string. Okay. That's going to fix this down here. And then we're going to go back to our server action and we're going to make it so that the result of our server action is that it feels or fills in this field. So coming back here, we're going to say record. So again, our record is the one that we've selected and it'll do it for every record that we've selected. X studio sales string. So our technical name here. And we're going to say equals error string. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and comment this out. Okay, we can either just put a pound sign in front of it, 
or we can select this and however many lines and do control backslash and it'll comment that out for us or uncomment it if we need to later on down the road. Commenting stuff out means that the code won't run so we can use it as notes or we can just comment out stuff that we don't need anymore. So let's go ahead and run this code and see what happens. So let's close out of studio here. We've got Jimmy customer. He is ready for this. We're ready for it. We're going to go ahead and go here and go testing, testing. Okay. Ah, I didn't comment that out properly or I didn't save actually. That was my problem. So we're going to go back and save. Okay. And we're going to go back here. We're going testing, testing. Ooh, look at that sales string. Jimmy customer has two sales totaling $115. One last thing I wanted to go over is basic logic. So we're gonna go ahead and say, if sale count equals two, we're going to raise a user error. I don't like, or I do not like that number. Okay. So we can actually use some logic here to say, if this condition is met, let's go ahead and do this instead. So we pull up Jimmy customer. We're going to say this and name sale count is not defined, man. I'm being sloppy right now. So let's look at this sales count. So we'll save that. We'll run this again. I do not like that number. We can certainly use this in a more serious way, but we can say if the sales count is two, then we do that else do something else. And we can use this logic and the loops and the other stuff that I've taught you to build some pretty awesome stuff once we get creative. So there you go. A little bit of Python to make you a little more dangerous, but a lot more efficient. There's so much you can do with this. If you have any questions or if you want to see more of this, please drop that in the comments below. It helps me a lot. Thanks.